Okay, so we have our MIDI instrument, the drum rack. We have a drum rack kit loaded, and we have this track armed. Now at this point, like I've been doing, I've been using my computer keyboard as a MIDI controller. And I have that set up because in the upper right hand corner, if we look next to the key button, I have my computer keyboard icon on, and this allows me to use my computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. Now, there's a couple things that I didn't really touch on when it comes to using the computer keyboard uh, that can be really, really helpful. Now, we know that the A row functions like the white keys on a keyboard, and the Q row, starting with W, functions like the black keys on a keyboard. Let me go ahead and turn this down a bit. We know that the Z button will allow us to transpose the entire computer keyboard down an octave. And the X button will allow us to bring it back up an octave. But one thing we haven't really talked about is being able to affect the velocity with the computer keyboard. Now, this can really help when you're programming drums, because if you think about an actual drummer, the drummer doesn't hit every single drum at the same exact uh, level of force every time, because humans aren't robots. So there's natural variation with the volume when the drums are being played. And emulating this or recreating this with virtual drums can be extremely useful and helpful and just make everything sound a bit more natural. So how will we do this with our computer keyboard? Well, let's go ahead and create a MIDI clip. And I'm going to extend this MIDI clip so we can see all the individual notes. And I'm gonna press play on this clip so we have our playhead running through it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the volume of the metronome. Remember I can use this uh, little preview knob here to adjust the volume of the metronome. So now I can turn that on without it making my ears bleed. <laughs> okay, now if I wanna record into a pre-existing clip, there's a button at the top of the screen, this little circle button, and this allows me to record into session view clips. Now, this clip is empty, but it's a pre-existing clip because I double clicked inside of one of these blank clip slots and it created a blank clip. Now, just because this track is armed, doesn't mean that the minute I play this blank clip, it's gonna start recording into it. I can play the instrument because the track has been armed, so the MIDI track is listening for incoming MIDI notes, but nothing's being recorded yet. So if I wanna record something, I have to make sure that this button, this session record button is on. So, let me play this again. Now the benefit of this is that you can arm the track, practice what you wanna do, and then when you're ready, you can turn this on. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this on. I'll start recording a kick and snare pattern. All right, so let me turn my metronome off and let's get a good look at what's been recorded here. Now the timing is a little bit off on some of the notes. I can see that they don't fall exactly on the grid lines, but that's okay. That can be fixed with quantization later. The main thing I'm concerned with is the area at the bottom. So let me go ahead and expand this. If you notice, these lines down here represent the velocity of each individual note. And as I hover over each one of these, I can see a number at the top of my clip that tells me the actual velocity in numbers. Everything here is the exact same velocity because I'm not using a velocity sensitive controller, I'm using a computer keyboard and each button just functions as basically an on off switch. So what happens if I want more variation in the velocity of my drum sounds? Well, like I said, I can adjust the velocity by using either the C button on my computer keyboard. And when I press the uh, C button to bring the velocity down, you'll see a message in this area that's telling me what the new velocity is. So it was 100 before, I just brought it down to 80. I press C again, now it's 60, now it's 40, and now it's 20. Now, if I was to play the same kick and snare pattern, we can hear that this kick and snare are significantly quieter now. Now I'm not gonna add another kick and snare. Let's go ahead and, all right, there's my closed hi-hat. All right, so I'm gonna record one pass with this closed hi-hat relatively quiet, and then I'll do another pass where I bring the velocity up. And again, this is just to hammer home the fact that velocity variation in your drum programming is extremely helpful. So let me play the beat.
All right, so let's do a very simple hi hat pattern. Let me go ahead and start recording this. All right, and again, I realize that it's a little bit offbeat. We're gonna get to quantization later. But as I look at this now, I can see these notes are a lighter color and the velocity is significantly lower. Now I can always go and adjust this manually after the fact if I want to, but it's just nice to be able to adjust the velocity uh, of your notes before you enter them on the computer keyboard. So the one last thing I'll touch on with this, because I don't think this requires too much more explanation, is that uh, there's certain notes that you're gonna want to accent that will be uh, very strong or louder and they will kind of help define the beat. Oftentimes a note that's placed at the beginning of a bar on the first beat is usually heavily accented, which means that it's a bit louder. And if you're going for something that has much more of a straight kind of feel, then you're gonna to want to accent the main quarter notes, the first, second, third, and fourth beat. One, two, three, four. When you hear a lot of house music, techno, things like that, the kick drum, uh, it outlines the beat and the kick drum hits every quarter note, okay? So it's like a heavily accented uh, kick drum that's playing every quarter note and it makes it feel very straight, a very straight driving beat. We can use the velocity to our advantage to accent certain notes. And if you accent the notes that fall right on the beat, the rhythm ends up feeling a bit more straight. If you accent notes that don't fall right on the beat, notes that are either a little bit before or after the beat, then you can create more of a syncopated rhythm where it doesn't feel so straight. So here is a good example. Let's take our first hi-hat here. And I'm gonna accent this one by bringing the velocity up. I'm gonna bring the velocity of this one up here. Now this is falling right in between the second beat, 1.2, and the third beat, 1.3. So we have the first one accented, one, two, and then this fourth one is accented. And I'm gonna accent the one on the third beat as well. And I think with these last three, I'm gonna make it so they gradually kind of ramp up in volume. So I'll turn this one up a bit more. So by doing that, we have a heavy accent on the first hi-hat. We have a heavy accent on these two hi-hats, okay? The one on the third beat and the one that happens right before it. And then these last three kind of gradually ramp up in velocity to bring us back to the accented hi-hat on the first beat. So just this little bit of velocity variation makes the beat feel a bit more nuanced. Uh, and it kind of feels like it's bringing you back to the beginning of the bar. So. Don't lose sight of the fact that velocity, even though it seems very uh, simple, uh, can definitely add a ton of variation when you're programming your beats. And you can easily adjust the velocity of the notes before you record them if you use a computer keyboard by simply pressing the C button to go down by 20 for the velocity or the V button to go up by 20 for the velocity. Now you don't have to use the computer keyboard in order to program a MIDI clip. Uh, you don't even need a MIDI controller at all. And we're gonna look at how we can program a drum beat without any sort of MIDI controller by simply drawing the notes inside of the clip.